Good morning, everyone. Today, I'm excited to share with you six habits that can shift your life. For those who are struggling, for those who want to have more consistency, more happiness, more calm and peace in your life, these are the six habits that we can work on together. So let me pull back and start from the beginning. So here in Thailand, we have a program for ordination where men come from around the world to train themselves to become Buddhist monks. From this, because they come from all backgrounds, all religions, all around the world, when we are teaching them from the ground up, what we're teaching them is about the mind, how to train the mind. What we know is that a mind that is not well trained, suffering will follow. A mind that is well trained, then happiness and peace will follow. And when we talk about a well trained mind, what is the word that comes to mind? And the word that comes to mind is really habits. Habits are the things that we do, our behaviors that are repetitive, that are unconscious, that we can repeat all the time. And it's just uh, innate in us and it's just autopilot. We're just doing this automatically. And for humans, we're made of two aspects. One is the body. And that another aspect is the mind. So when it comes to habits, there are two types. One is just general habits, brushing your teeth, driving your car, wearing your clothes. You got to a point where this just becomes very mundane. You can do it without even putting so much effort into uh, thinking about it. Then the second type of habit is the refined habit. This is kind of your internal world. And both of these reflect, one habit reflect the body, and then one habit reflects the mind, and this is what we'll go over. But again, these are six habits, very fundamental and foundation that you can start now and integrate into your life. So let's get started. go to bed on time. If you do not have a consistent bedtime, this is one thing that can be helpful for you to establish. I'm guilty of this as well because before be coming here to become a Buddhist monk, my bedtime was really when I wanted to be my bedtime. <laughs> and I lived a lifestyle where I was very active working as a professional dancer, then I would have different gigs and different projects that I would have to go on or a late night rehearsal. So when I would come home, one, I would come home late and two, I needed time to unwind. So what was easy for me is go hop in a shower, come watch TV until you're tired. And what that looks like is then my bedtime is typically between midnight all the way to 2 a.m. And then the next day I would have work or something to do. I would wake up quite uh, groggy. I would wake up late sometimes, but it was not helpful. So establishing this bedtime is so helpful because sleep is important. We need quality sleep try to get depending on your situation but between six to eight hours without fully rest your body is exhausted your mind is exhausted so now let's implement this if you do not have a bedtime now set one in the beginning it will be quite difficult you might lay there for a few hours you can't fall asleep struggling it's okay the next day you do it again and the next day it might take you an hour and 50 minutes do it again the following day it might take you an hour then eventually it might take you 15 minutes then eventually you can sleep at the proper time for 
Buddhist monks, we typically sleep around 10 p.m. and then we wake up around 4 a.m. But again, each person's situation is a bit different, but having a consistent time is helpful. For us then, as we're training the new monks, we have no TV, we have no electronics, we're not on a Kindle, we're not, <laughs> we're not doing anything like that. So when we have nothing to do, go to bed and go to bed on time. But this is where we get started and develop this habit now. Wake up early. One of the habits that many people have is laziness. Where does it start? Here it is. <laughs> because when we sleep in, we have a habit of not waking up at a proper time, then it can cultivate into procrastination. It can uh, translate into laziness. But for us as Buddhist monks, like I said, we wake up at about 4 a.m. to start our morning chanting and our morning meditation. People will always ask us, uh, Venerable Nick, how is that possible? How do you get up early? Well, go to step number one. <laughs> and step number one, how we wake up early is because we sleep early and we sleep on time. And from that, we then feel rested. Getting up early is important just because now we can get a start on the day. First, make sure we start with stillness, get clarity. Hopefully you have a meditation practice. You're clear on what is the intention and what needs to be accomplished for this day. And now you can uh, dominate this day fully. But for us staying in the monastery, it's so strange. In the beginning where we're doing our chores, we're doing our alms offering, we're doing our meditation. By the time it's about 8 a.m., wow, I've got more done than I did when I was in my lay life. But this is just a habit where when you wake up early, you get to utilize so much of the time that can be very effective and then also uh, help you towards your goal and it'll be so much easier. One of the things that I wanted to add to that is, you can already see that our ordination program is about 30 days, and just this mere fact of going to sleep on time, waking up on time, the men already start to shift. They already feel more calm, they already feel more peaceful, they have more energy, and they're not sure why, but this is a big contributor to this. But as humans, we like habits. As humans, we like uh, structure, and with structure, it helps us to be calm and peaceful. Exercise regularly. Why is this so important? Well, because again, I shared with you from the beginning, humans were comprised of two components. There are two aspects. One is the body and one is the mind. You have many goals, you have many dreams, things that you want to accomplish. So what, what do you need in order to accomplish that? One is the human body. And this thing needs to be strong. Even for us in the monastery, because our goal is to meditate and to train the mind, we need this physical body healthy so then we can sit. And in order to do that, we need to exercise this body. When we talk about exercise, it doesn't have to be aggressive. It doesn't have to be where we need the right workout clothes. You need to go to the gym. What I'm talking about is so simple. Get your heart rate up. Go outside and start walking, okay? <laughs> when you're walking, walk a little faster. There you go, now your heart rate is up. When you're walking a little bit faster, now walk a little bit longer. Get some, get your blood flowing. A question that was asked to our master is, do you love exercising? And his answer was, no, 
<laughs> does not love exercising, but it's just a need and a duty that we need to do to take care of this body. So it comes back to discipline. Some days you're lazy, keep moving. Some days you're uh, busy, again, we still need to take care of this physical body because it supports everything else. But if you can, then take a few days a week just to do some walking, get your heart rate up, get out in nature, whatever it is that uh, resonates with you, try it out. Even stretching and yoga can be helpful. So give it a try. Moderation in eating. This is so important because eating is something that we need to do to sustain us every single day. So when we do something every single day, what does that translate to? And what that translates to is it becomes your habits. So then from there, for us, we need to learn how to eat properly. When we're training our new monks, here it is, important training. First off, let's start with eat on time. <laughs> and that's it. For monks, we eat two times a day. We don't eat after uh, midday uh, because for us, we don't need so much energy so our food can digest, but our goal really is with meditation. But eating on time is important. Uh, for us, we eat breakfast at around 7, 7.30. Then we eat lunch at around 11 or 11.30 and try to be finished by noontime. In the beginning for me, I'm like, I'm not hungry. I don't wanna come. I just ate, I'm full. But again, then we eat because it's time to eat. And slowly with the training, then our body starts to adjust. We eat at the right time. We start to get hungry at the right time. We give our body time to digest. And then we also eat in moderation. We train our new monks because they eat in a bowl. What do you get? And in the beginning, the new monks, they'll see all the delicious Thai food that is offered and they go by taste. They go by sight. They go by feeling. <laughs> and what that looks like is now your bowl that is deceiving gets full. And you have to eat everything. And these new monks will stuff everything and because of that, they're so full, food coma, and by the time it's time to meditate, within two hours later, they can't even function. Again, you're also in a coma again, <laughs> knocked out. But what we're trying to teach them is, what is the purpose of eating? The purpose of eating is to sustain your body for one more day. And from that then, see, what does your body need to be healthy? How much food does your body need? If you eat too little, oh, you're gonna be starving. And meditation later is so hard to accomplish. If you eat too much, then, like I said, you're drowsy and you're sleepy. So find the proper food for your body, find the proper amount, and what we're doing is we're practicing consideration. And then from that, be mindful of all of these factors. The time that we eat, how much that we eat, uh, what kind of foods that we eat, because it establishes a habit. If you do not have good habits now, it's okay, but come back and start to week your eating schedule. Keep clean and tidy. Many people don't understand that our outside world reflects our inner world. Our inner world reflects our outer world. As we begin meditating, as we begin training our minds, we make sure that the new monks cultivate uh, 
this importance and understanding of cleaning our outside world. We make sure they clean their bedrooms. When you wake up, fold your blanket. Uh, put your pillow at the right place. Clean all your surrounding areas before you go to the next phase of your life. When they are done eating, we make sure that they clean their plates. After washing the plates and the dishes and the cups, make sure you dry them and put them in the proper place. Why is all of this so important? It's because it reflects your mind. Take a experiment of your own life. When you're busy, when your life is chaotic, you're going through a lot, what does your bedroom look like? Yes, <laughs> the closet is dirty, your clothes is everywhere, and then it clouds your mind. It uh, stirs up emotions in your mind, and when I work with different people, they're struggling, I always come back to this. Go clean your outside area. Clean your car, clean your closet, clean your bedroom, clean your office. And when you start with this, what it will do it is that it will start to create a space in your mind. So then now you can start to see things more clearly. But this is important because it affects one another. And the more that we train ourselves in mindfulness, the more that we train ourselves in meditation, you'll start to see the correlation that a tidy space affects the quality of your mind. Meditate daily. If possible, try to meditate 30 minutes a day. But for those who do not have a habit yet, it's okay. Let's start with just a minimum of five minutes. Some days you can meditate longer, good. Some days it's a challenge, so stick with a minimum of five minutes, but make sure you meditate daily. The example that I give all the time is like a shower. And we know that the physical body gets dirty and we have a habit of every single day, whether you're busy, you're stressed out, you have a habit that you clean the physical body, you shower because you know it gets dirty. But the same thing for the mind and our mind also gets dirty. The mere fact that we're out into the world, we're engaging with our five senses, now the mind is clouded. And meditation is the thing that helps us to clear the dirt, clear the anger, clear the emotions. So take the time every single day, develop the habit of meditation. Also another point that I wanted to add is try to meditate just a few minutes before going to sleep. One of the big things that I learned myself in the monastery was really how to sleep before myself is I would take the time I'm laying in bed I would think about my problems I would think about how to solve my problems and that's what I slept in and you can see with that environment your mind is now worried your mind is shaky your mind is fearful your mind is anxious and cloudy versus if you took the time to allow the mind to get still. And with meditation, then you can sleep in a more restful state. And the rule that was so helpful for me that I've learned is that the last thing you think about is automatically the first thing that you think about when you wake up. So if you think about your problems, you wake up, this is where your mind is. How many times have you woken up where you Again, the thing that you thought about, we're, we're still here. It's like you didn't even go to bed. So when we can train our mind to get still before bedtime, we can fix this. You can have quality sleep. You're not having nightmares and you can actually rest fully. But if you can now incorporate meditation into your habits. So there you have it. The first four 
that I went through, those are habits for the body. The second two that I went through was habits for your mind. And we need both. When it comes to these habits, whatever lifestyle that you're currently living now, it's okay, no judgment. But again, coming back to what I talked about in the beginning, to have a trained mind, happiness will follow. And having talked to so many of you, you want happiness and you want peace. So this is where it comes from. The advice that I would give you is start small. You don't have to incorporate all of this at once, but pick one thing and keep building on it. You will struggle. It will be a challenge because you're not used to it yet. No problem. That's what a habit is. It takes time to the point where it becomes unconscious. You do this automatically. When you don't do it, then you have this feeling in your body of I'm missing that. Now you know you incorporated that habit. But my assignment and my homework for all of you is pick one item and start to incorporate it. When you can do that successfully, now keep going and to add all the other stuff. Whew, that's a lot of ranting. <laughs> but again, I hope this is helpful. Sending you all my blessings from Thailand as usual. Hope you're all safe and uh, happy. Take care everyone. Satu 